Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Welcome to a Wednesday edition of the Ramble. I'm Alex, and we'll be here until midnight. Ladies and gentlemen, down there in Florida is Albert Reynoso. Hello, Albert. How you doing? Hello, Alex, and everyone, uh, and you listening. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I um, um, uh, I should say that we're recording this uh, about a day before I think it's going to be broadcast. Okay. And uh, on that day, in your wonderful state, there's a major indictment going down. Today. Yeah, today. Which is yesterday for those who are watching. Well, yesterday, yeah, but but what we're saying is, as I'm talking to you, I already explained that, as I'm talking to you. You've confused me with this. That's why I don't know what's going on. Yes, I understand. It's going down. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite a, you know. How do you feel about uh, this indictment? Have you seen, have you read any of it? I've read the whole indictment. Did you really? It's very, very straightforward, very simple. It's a very quick indictment to read, and yeah, it's got pictures. That's, it's that's nice. why it's cool. why I think Jack Smith is his name, uh, yeah. uh, 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 said to people, read it, okay? Yes, because it's, it's very easy to read. It, they say it's very easy to read, and when it's, you're through with it, you'll understand what the charges are. Very easy to read, very simple to comprehend, very well laid out, and I think it's 40-something pages, and it feels like it's maybe a 10-page read, tops. Yeah. Well, he, um, uh, uh, but I saw online some people who were like, you know, Trumpers, okay, who just don't even want to read it. Oh, I wouldn't read that, I wouldn't read that crap. That's their business. You know, that, you know it's the same as the senators who, who, uh, who were asked to um, give their decision after the impeachments, who, who before the, the before the impeachment vote went down, mm-hmm. after he was impeached, said, I already have made up my mind and I don't have to look at the evidence. I mean, this is the country we live in now, a mm-hmm. country where it doesn't matter. And, and the next time that I go, uh, that I'm selected for jury duty, I will say the same thing. I've already made up my mind. This is the American way. Our senators do it. So why am I, yeah. why would you be surprised well, about well, that? Well, you know what's kind of, kind of interesting is that, that uh, uh, I, I've been watching all the different Republicans trying to parse this thing, and they always go back to this, uh, uh, oh, uh, you know what Hillary did? You know what uh, Joe Biden had in his garage? Well, to begin with, it doesn't matter. This is about Donald Trump. This is a case but against Donald Trump. You said you've been watching all the Republicans. Not all the Republicans are saying that. Nikki Haley just turned today and said this is a very serious thing. That, have you, have that you she, heard? Have you heard uh, what's his name from uh, New Jersey? Uh, Chris, oh yeah, Christie. Christ, Christie's been saying it from the start. You, you know what it is to, to listen to him discuss it is amazing because what he is is he was a prosecutor. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. he's sitting there saying these things like a prosecutor would. And basically, I mean, he said everything from the fact that, you know, they. It, somebody asked him, well, how do you feel about well, the fact that uh, uh, Trump referred to you as a fat this or that? And he said, look, the guy is a child. <laughs> he said he thinks as a child, he reacts as a child, he said, and he should be treated as a child. I mean, if you had a child that did this, you would send him to his room without dinner, you know? But no, he gets away with it. He's a big child. And, and that's, he, he said, that's the problem, you know? Yeah. I, have a, I have a title for him. Since he loves the word great and he loves to talk about America all the time, he is referred to me by me as the great American victim. That's what he is. The great American victim. That's yeah. what he always is. He's the victim. This is the great American victim. That's what he is. He's a victim. Always the victim. No button. He takes no responsibility for anything except being the victim. Well, again, it's being a kid, you know, like uh, the dog ate my homework. Mm-hmm. You know, everything's the dog ate my homework. I didn't know this. I didn't know I couldn't do that. 
But he has this idea that you become president and all of a sudden there's this magic wand and you can wave it over everything and anything you say is done. And it's not true, you know. But, you know, that may that may be, I don't know, but it, there may be something about the office that puts that in, in some people's head because Nixon had the same thing. You know, yeah. if, if 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 the president says it's true, then it's true. You know, when he when he told David Frost. Yeah. Yeah. If well, he, if the president does it, it can't be a crime or whatever. The, no, the, the, but, but the fact is, the president is no different than anybody else, only that he has certain powers. You mm -hmm. know, if he turns around, points a gun at somebody and kills them, he's responsible just like any other human being, whether he's president or not. You well, know. maybe that's his next thing that he's going to do. What what he what he said on on Fifth Avenue? He'll shoot somebody and he'll get away with it. Well, what did he say? He called himself the uh, Avenger or the Redem uh, 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 the Avenger uh, that he was he was going to, you know he was he's going to get even with people if he gets elected. He, he well, just no, who doesn't believe that? Well, of more than he, he ever did the first time around. Of course he is. Of yeah. course he is. So do you want this? I'm asking all the Republicans out there in the audience. <laughs> one of them. Uh, do you really want this guy to be president with this kind of notion about what his powers are? You know, and and um, uh, you know the wonderful thing about Christie is he laid out all the things that that Trump said he was going to do when he ran for office, and all all the things that people said he did, but he really didn't. He didn't build the wall. You know. He said, as, as Christy put it, he didn't even get a peso from Mexico, <laughs> you know? I mean, uh, it, it is just amazing that he did it really absolutely very few things in office. Well, yeah. let's just hope that uh, Chris Christie makes it to one of these uh, so-called town hall and so-called debates yeah. uh, that, that will be held in the next year and a half and see what Chris Christie can do uh, against Donald Trump in a so-called debate. Well, I think he can handle them. I think oh, he can certainly, handle them. Certainly I do. Who yeah. do you think prepped him for debates? Well, that's right. Yeah. yeah. The guy who prepped him for debates was Chris Christie, so he knows exactly what this guy is capable of and not capable of. Right. And in a, in that kind of setting, I think he would take uh, Trump to the to the to the cleaners. I really do. Well, if he has enough time in well, between well, uh, yeah. uh, jabs about being a fat pig and being, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to remember, the wonderful thing about Chris Christie is he was a prosecutor. You mm -hmm. know, he was the attorney general for the state of New Jersey. Prosecuted, he said, 190 cases and didn't lose a single one. All right? So put him in a debate with Trump when he's now going to be a real adversary and he can, he can take him to the woodshed. He really can, because well, being a prosecutor doesn't doesn't mean you you're the, the you're the most logical person in the world. You, let's not forget Rudy Giuliani was a prosecutor too. And look look yes. at the mess that guy is. But not as good a one as Chris Christie. No, no. Yeah. Uh, everybody said you know they said about Giuliani. They said gee whatever ha what happened to Rudy Giuliani? Nothing happened to Rudy Giuliani. He was always this way. It's just as he got older, everything you do when you're younger gets magnified when you're older. As somebody once said to me, uh, I can't remember who, I think it was uh, Harry Shearer, he said, when you're trying to do an impression of somebody, you got to do the old guy, not the young guy, because the young guy doesn't have much flavor. But when they get old, everything they had when they were young is amplified, and then they're easy to do an impression of. Does that make sense? I guess so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I only know one comedian that ever did the young Bob Hope, you know, when they did an impression. I got to tell you. Yeah, but that's the old Bob Hope. Isn't that something? Yeah, but that's the old Bob Hope. That's the extent of my Dave Bob Dave Thomas on SCTV who could do right. the, young, the young Hope, which was amazing. <laughs> You're right, yeah. Which was amazing. But, yeah. but, but I was told that, you know, if you're going to do an impression of somebody, you're going to do the old guy. You're not going to do the young guy because everything amplifies itself. And I think that uh, what's happened here with Trump, for instance, is everything has amplified itself. Hmm. You know, if he was an asshole when he was young, he's a bigger asshole now, right? And all his paranoia, if he, had, if he was paranoid when he was young, which we assume he was, his paranoia is tripled. 
Yeah. So what what it, what do you say about Biden? Because he's up there in years old. Hey, also. listen, you know, I, 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 Marjorie and I always have this argument, you know, and let's, I'm 83. All right. I'm an old guy. So I think Are I, you that old already. I didn't. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure I can say this. Okay. And, and not be held to account for it because I, I keep telling her that I just think he's too old to run again. I don't think, I think maybe he still has his wits about him, but it doesn't look it, you know? And, and and perception is everything. You know, uh, sadly, I believe what you say. Mm-hmm. And and I, I think that he still has what it takes to govern. Mm-hmm. But I do think perception is everything in this country and in this culture and at this time. And sadly, that's the case. Well, the question uh, is, the question is, will he be as good at it at 84 as he is right now? Because he's going into that part of his uh, aging process where everything starts to diminish. I have to admit that uh, I don't know if I'd ever if I'll ever drive a car again because I don't know if I'm alert enough, mm. okay, to drive, all okay. right, safely. Uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, in the case of of of, uh, of Biden, yeah, today he probably can do it. But what about two years from now, three years from now? I know how much I have declined in just a couple of years, or at least I feel I've declined. I'm lightheaded a lot, you know. I'm, I'm. I, when I do processes here at the computer, I have to think twice sometimes about what I'm doing in order to accomplish it, you know. So, uh, you know, what what happens when he gets older? He's go, it's, That's another four years down the line. He's going to be five years older when he is out of office at the end of another term. But and it doesn't matter because he's already got a second term. He can't go any further, so <laughs> let him do it. Yeah, but all I'm saying, will he live through it? That's the other question. You know, it, I'm, I'm now in that, in that uh, valley where everybody starts dying. You know? Yeah, right. I mean, a lot of people die in their 70s and so on, but, you know, the older I get, the closer I know I'm getting, all right? Uh, and, and of course, I've had people die on me like crazy. You know, I, it, most of my good friends are dead. You know, and that, that's, that's kind of depressing. But all I'm saying is that with Biden, I, I, yeah, he may be entirely capable right now, but two years down the line, I know how much I've diminished in two years. You know, so I mean, I, I just, as an older person, don't know if I, if I feel good about him running. Uh, people say, "Well, then, who could run?" Well, you got Gavin Newsom is a good answer. I mean, Gavin. But do you think, but do you think that the that the fact that he is the president keeps him on his toes? I mean, that that's a oh, job. Oh, oh, you know, that's the re- the reason why I still do this, right? right? Is to keep me on my toes. That if I didn't do this, I'd probably be in a lot worse shape than I am right now. I mean, you probably think I'm pretty alert, don't you? Show, show, show me what you would look like if you didn't do this for the last 10 years. <laughs> um, um, uh, you know, I mean, uh, am I, uh, do I seem alert? Yeah, you're, you're very savvy. I mean, for you to be, for you to have kept up, gap, started the GabNet thing and then kept it up for the last 10 years. And I know you upgrade your computers and your mixers and your equipment all the time. That takes a lot of doing even if you know what's going on. So I give you I give you a lot well, of credit. I wouldn't want to have to pull all the wires out of here and reassemble them again. Let me well, put that's, it that that's way. Ne- that's never fun, no. No, I, I don't know if I want to do that. And I should, actually, because it's a rat's nest. Yeah, I've, I've thought the same thing in my house. And no matter, by the way, I'll tell people that no matter what you do, when you've got a lot of equipment, eventually it's all going to become a rat's nest. Yeah, that's true. You can... You can tape them together, you can label them, you can do all of that when you put it back together again and all, everything could be neat and clean yeah. and so on, and then all of a sudden one day you look down there and you go, oh, what a rat's nest. But just but just get into the point where you have to track down what a problem is. Why don't I have that signal? Where is that audio? And then you have to track the cable. Oh my goodness. Then you know what the rat's nest is. Yeah. Yeah. You can never track that cable and, down. Uh, and, and you would think that maybe in a radio station or whatever, this would be, everything would be really neat and clean and right. But yet, how many times do you ever have to look behind a control board 
And down there, what was there? A rat's nest. Nest, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no way to really, uh, if I, one day, I guess if we're long after we're dead, everything's going to be wireless. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't even think everything so. Everything will be wireless. I think humanity will, will expire before that, before that time but, happens. But then we won't have to have all the, you know, the, right. wire, the wires and crap like that, you know. But, and then if it's all wireless, then you have to worry about, well, well why can't I get the signal here? What, what's the code I'm missing? It's just going to be the same thing. Yeah, you have to go through a bunch of code instead of going through the, through the rats. Well, nest. getting back to age and being president and so on, Nikki Haley made the comment that anybody over, the, over 50 who's in Congress or, in the, or the president or whatever should have to take a competency test. And I'm going, you know, come on. I know people that are complete morons at 50, and I know people that have all their wits about them at 83. You know, well, I mean, I, case, I would appear to people to have all my wits about me. I don't feel I do. OK, but but in, in, in the case of what Nikki Haley said, I don't think that's a bad idea. Then let's have everybody who applies to be president or whatever. Take a uh, competency they, test. Let them take a, a competency test. If you have to have it for someone who's 80, have it for someone who's what's the legal age to be well, president? You got to remember something. You got to remember something. Anybody can become president. According to the law, anybody who wants to be president can try. Over a certain age. No. Oh, well, over a certain age, over 35. Right. Oh, 35. Okay. Yeah. But I don't think we've ever had one that close to the. Although, how old was Obama when he got elected? He was in his early 30s? No, I don't think so. I've, not early 30s, early 40s, I mean. Because Kennedy was still the youngest president, right? I don't know. Wasn't Obama like 43, maybe 40? Well, hold on a second. Echo, <laughs> how old was President Obama when he was elected president? Why don't you ask who the youngest president Obama was? Obama was 47 years old. 47 years old. Seven, see? Okay. How old was Jack Kennedy? Okay. Uh, um, uh, Echo, how old was Jack Kennedy when he was voted president? Let me ask mm -hmm. Echo, how old was Jack Kennedy when he became president? John F. Kennedy died in Dallas, Texas. It says he died. Age of well, He died at he 46. Uh, died. I think he was probably 43. Okay. Yeah. He died. So that's it says and, here, and even DeSantis is 44 now, right? So he wouldn't. Is DeSantis 44? I think that's what I read. Really? I, I could be wrong. Oh, God. He's, he, he seems older than that, doesn't he? In as, in as much as he really doesn't react like a young person, yes. I got to tell you something about DeSantis. Uh, to me, the crowning glory of anybody I would vote for is, do they have a sense of humor? I think that's an important factor. Am I, am I, don't you feel that way? I think it, it helps a lot for in life. In life, but he has he a he has a sense of humor, right? Right. Uh, DeSantis has no sense of humor. Has absolutely no sense of humor. Well, neither did Trump. Trump didn't have a sense of humor. You never heard him get funny, you know. Chris Christie is very funny, by the way. Yes, he is very funny. Uh, if I were a Republican, I would maybe vo be voting for him right now. You know, it, it, that's tough. That's tough. Well, who else? What other Republicans would you vote for? Oh, I like him. I like him. Yeah. I liked him when he was governor of New Jersey. Yeah. I said, I like him as governor. And I wasn't in New Jersey. Well, I said I always liked him because I felt, I didn't feel he was dishonest. They, somebody asked me, I was watching. Uh, Came to Bridgegate. Well, the Bridgegate thing, I, I watched an interview with uh, him on uh, PBS. And he was asked about Bridgegate. And he said, that was the biggest mistake I ever made. And he mm -hmm. said, but it wasn't my mistake. It was that I hired people to make decisions and I allowed them to make those decisions. And he said, I hired the wrong people. Good he way said, to pass the buck. Well, it's a good way to pass the buck, but he didn't pass the buck. He said, but I was governor, so I had to take the hit for it. Okay. You know? So, I mean, but he still kind of passed the buck a little bit. Well, I mean, anytime you're trying to weasel out of something, you pass the buck. That's right. But it could well have been that it was other people. I think it was. I think the only person convicted in that whole thing was one of the people who was in charge of that. 
a PR person or something, yeah, something like that? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, if I remember correctly. I mean, it's a long time ago. Yeah. But, you know, also he said we all make mistakes in our life and we learn by them and we move on and hopefully you change as a result of that. And he said, I feel I've changed. I learned my lesson out of Bridgegate. You know? Well, you, you not only change, but you're able to admit your mistakes. Well, he, so he, that's one of the biggest things. Well, he was saying that is the greatest quality you should have is the ability yes. to admit your mistakes. Yeah, I screwed that, up. That you can always trust a politician who, who admits his mistakes. But don't mm -hmm. trust any politician who says he doesn't make any. You know? Uh, yeah. And and I, I'm I'm somewhat fond of Christie, you know, more than even more now than I was then. And you remember, I always kind of liked him. I always yeah, found I, that, I feel the same way. I, I feel think, exactly the same way, except for his politics. No, his politics. Yeah, there I, are some of his politics that I do agree with. Well, he's a tried and true Republican. Yes, he is. You know, I think he even said that if Trump finally winds up running, he would have to vote for him. You know, because he's a Republican. Say that still? Still? Well, he's talking, I, you know, as I say, he's a Republican. Yeah. You know? And and say, I know you have a new haircut. Is that a new haircut? That's a number one. That's a That's number one. Oh, Give your, me the number one. Does your does your wife do it? Because my, no, I would, I would love her to do it, but she's too scared to do it. Because this is a number no, one. I, this is a number one, and my wife did it yesterday. No, but wait a minute. That's not a number one. That's right close to the close to the bone there. That's that's the skin. Well, that's you, number one, I think. On the on the shaver? I think so. Well, not, this is this has been about a week or week and a half so. So yeah. it maybe it was a little shorter. And, and I noticed your hair was lower because there's a there's a tan mark here. Yeah, that's that's always there. I don't know why. I think it's uh, um, yeah. like the, the thing that Michael Jackson had. So is your hair? Are you losing hair now? Oh no. Well, no. what do you mean? The front, the front doesn't come forward as much as it did. Yeah, it it always came came back to here, right. but it, it 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 moved up a little bit. I, I I you know the way I comb it, it, it looks like it's. Oh okay. Further. Than it is. Right. But no, I'm not losing my hair. I'm just trying. I wouldn't mind if I were. I was just hoping you would get like this and then I could. Are you losing your hair? It looks like you may be losing A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, you know, at one point uh, I was still growing hair up here. You know, okay. Yeah, still, I still have hair up here, oddly enough. Uh, but um, Rich, Robert Schimmel, the comedian, God bless mm -hmm. him, long gone. Very that, funny. Another one of my friends gone. Uh, Robert Schimmel is the guy that taught me how to do my hair. I was wearing my hair like long here, and then it was going here. And he said, cut it really short. He said, and then, I, he says, I know it's going to be tough to do. Shave this all off. Mm -hmm. He said, it, it, and I said, why? And he says, I call it preemptive baldness. And that's really what it is. A lot of people do that now. Yes, a lot of people. Yeah, and it, but it, you really don't. You really don't lose hair. The hair just goes different places because you, it moves from your top of your head into your nose and your ears and oh, all oh, of the oh, places. Oh. That you I, don't. I don't know why I why it suddenly comes out my nose and my ears, right? It can't get through the skull or something. You'd like so to be able to do. You'd like to be able to do this. Yeah, and right. then have it all move out of there and back to the top of your head. That'd be nice, but no, nah. it doesn't work. I, I can't figure that one out either. Mm. Yeah. Also, you, I think you, when you gray, you gray from the chin up. You gray from. You the ever chin notice a lot of people up. have have uh, beards and they're gray, but then they all of a sudden. They, oh yes, yeah. yes, that happened to me. Yes. And Marjorie always goes, "Oh, he colors his hair," and I go, "No, it might be that he still has that color in mm -hmm. his hair. That yes, it, you're it right. It moves from the chin upward." Facial hair go, goes. These are like, the things you learn with age, folks. Da, things you don't want to learn. Da, da, da. What? No. Things you don't want to learn. Oh no, no. Well, I as I said, I I, t I think I used to use this line over at Sirius XM too. I'm the Sacagawea of aging. I'm mm -hmm. here to tell you what's what what you have to look for up ahead. You know, <laughs> and uh, the, these are all the little things you gotta you gotta think about. Your hair's going to start coming out of your nose and not out of the top of your head. You know, and there are a few things about penises which I won't even get into. 
I don't want to know them either. And then I, you know, I had the prostate thing. So now it's, you know, it's like, well, it's, it, it, I had many good years. Okay. Many yep. good years. And I have no regret, no regret at all. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here, my dear friend. Uh, can we do another one of these next week? Yeah, let's do another one next week. In fact, I'm going to wear the same shirt. Next okay, week. I'll wear the same shirt too. Okay, Beautiful. make sure you put it aside so you remember to wear it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our lovely and attractive Albert Reynoso. Thank you, Albert. Thank you. Okay. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey there, everybody. How are you? I, I'm so glad that Albert has kind of consented to do our show every cup every week or so. I, I because I, I enjoy his company. Also, uh, Laurie Thompson. We're glad to have her on. Some new people, and uh, of course, also uh, Bubbles, who is kind of on a limited uh, schedule right now because number one. He had COVID and now he's tired all the time, which I am too. I and I discussed it with him today, and I think it was because of the bout with COVID a couple of weeks ago that I'm tired a lot. Okay, I feel tired, uh, and uh, also he uh, he now has a bad tooth that's been giving him a toothache. So, you know, uh, we we I did one with him today, but we only did one, so he'll only be on once for in the next two weeks. So, anyway, that's that's. You know, it's nice to kind of change things up. I'm glad now that we also have Farnham, and uh, I'm I'm doing an interview tomorrow uh, with uh, uh, a guy I just love. I think he's one of the funniest guys I know, Don Giller, and he's the guy that put up all the Letterman videos for years. And I just wanted to have him come on. He says, "I don't know why you want to have me on," and I said, "Because among other things, you're one of the funniest people I know." So anyway, we'll uh, be talking with Don Giller. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, bouncing things around a little bit here. Let me, uh, let me admit some people here. Oh, we have quite a few waiting, I guess, more than usual at the top of the show. And uh, uh, let me see here. Let me uh, bring them in. There they are. Uh, there's, uh, there's Jeff and there's uh, Alan. And there's Charlie, hey. and of course uh, our old friend uh, Brian Neary. Uh, hello, Brian. How are you? I'm good. How are you? He, he, what do you got? Problems there? You try, you try. No, I'm just. We had a wellness day today, so I'm unpacking the swag we got. A wellness day? What is a wellness day? Explain that to me. I don't. Uh, you know, I don't work for corporations well and this is when all these sponsors from your company come in like kaiser was there uh all these all these health places and stuff like that they come and they have a booth and then you go up there and you spin a wheel and you and you get a book yeah but you, but, a wheel and you get a a thing to hold your badge yeah but you don't get like a free cancer operation or a free uh no oh, but they even have a company called i forget what it was called and it's for second opinions so oh, if you, really yeah and so if you go to the doctor and then you need a second opinion you call this company and they will give you a second opinion yeah, I, you know, yeah like if i called them up they'd say yeah i agree you are ugly anyway <laughs> yeah thank you very much folks that's my joke for tonight uh and he oh hello to kevin boy it's so good to have kevin here how are you kevin you look like you were out in the sun too much yeah, probably. I've been um, out in the sun a lot. Graduation and stuff. Oh, okay. The daughter graduated, did she? Yes, yeah, she did. And is she happy now that she's out of high school? She is very happy that she's out of high school. And yeah. High school may be, in my opinion, the most boring of all the levels that you go to. What's that? I always found, uh, I always felt that high school was the most boring of all the regimentations. In other words, uh, elementary school is not boring. You're learning new stuff all the time, right? But high high school, they seem to just be reiterating everything you've already learned. So yeah, she found a way to make it interesting, I guess. I'm sure. What it becomes more of is a social thing. 
of the socialization yeah. you get in high school is a very good socialization. You learn about best friends and things like that, you know, stuff that when you learned were in, about, she also learned about COVID. Yes. She, <laughs> yes. Right. Learned about pandemics. Yeah, pandemics. Um, How to get through all that crap. I mean, it was tough for the high school kids these last four years. So, yeah. 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 So, uh, how are you all doing? How are you doing, Alan? Had had, had a good I'm, weekend, did you? I'm good. It was good listening to Albert. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The Great American Victim. What a perfect name. Yes, I love that. Oh, that Trump is, so is the, the Great American Victim. Uh, yeah, I feel so sorry for, uh, for, I mean, after listening to him in the last couple of days, I'm sorry. I, I feel really sorry for Trump, and I feel that he's really being handed a bad deal, and as we know, that it's all politically motivated, you know. Like, he had nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. You know, he had no responsibility in the matter. Um, do you hear all the Republicans now coming and saying that they will... They will put. They will give him a pardon if they're if they're elected president. Mm. So they're trying Just to get have, all the. Got all the samples of that a week or two ago. Well, you know, America. Uh, they say America. I think Nikki Haley said America uh, cannot withstand the kind of trauma that they would have from having a president in jail. And well, I thought to myself, and I said, "What? Who cares? You know? I mean, uh, okay, so don't put him in jail." He's Set, not a president. He's a former president. Yeah, former president. Well, I mean, but, you know, she says, oh, it's, it would just be devastating to the country. How would it be devastating to the country? He's not president anymore. And unless you elect him again, and he's hoping you elect him again, because then he's going to get some find some way to pardon himself and to get rid of all those, those prosecutors and so on who've gone after him, you know, it's... It's 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 pathetic what I'm seeing the Republicans say, you know, um, and they don't they don't seem to stop. The only one I like I, I was mentioning it again was is Chris Christie. He's taking no prisoners. He's saying hell, you know, this guy is a big baby, and uh, you know he 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 doesn't take responsibility for what he does. You know, and, and this wouldn't have been a problem for him. You know, they say, oh, uh, the, the big deal is uh, it's politically motivated. Well, you know, if you had just turned those things over when they politely asked for them in the beginning, none of this would be happening right now. And if you hadn't continued to do it and continue to obstruct justice and uh, all of that, you wouldn't be in the trouble you're in today. All you had to do was turn that stuff back over. And I think it was, I saw, what's his name? The guy with the mustache, uh, the, uh, uh, oh, what's John it? Bolton. John Bolton. Uh, yep, yeah, John Bolton. And he was saying that the trouble with Trump is he felt he, these were his. He owned them. They were supposed to be his. And he wasn't going to turn over what was his. But he doesn't realize it's not his. It's the countries. It's the, uh, it's the, people in the United States that own that stuff, not him. And if he had just realized that, we wouldn't be going through this right now. I think you're giving him too much credit. No, I'm not tr- I'm not giving him too much credit. Uh, it's not a question of giving him too little or too much credit. It's just if he had done all these things, he wouldn't have had the problems he has now. And the problem he's having now is as a result of... Uh, is as a result of uh, of, uh, of um, uh, him not doing what he should have done in the first place, you know. So now we got a president who's been indicted on a federal crime. Here's an interesting thing I didn't realize: when he was president, he passed a law about the dissemination of classified documents. And he said, if you are in the possession of classified documents and you don't turn them over, uh, you can go to jail for five years, automatic. He did that in the very beginning. Yes. And you know why he signed that and why he did that? Because of Hillary. Hillary. To try to get at Hillary. Yeah. Yeah. And he said he was going to prosecute anybody that does it. Right. And it came back to bite him in the ass. It's on tape. 
it's yeah. on video. Yeah. Yeah, but he didn't mean against himself. Well, of course. Yeah, man, he was. This will only go, apply to everybody else. Yeah, himself. this is this is a, yeah. He he's got a go, get out of jail card on that one. Yeah, and they keep saying that uh, you know uh, nobody uh, n nobody for this kind of thing has ever been prosecuted for these kind of documents uh, have, has been prosecuted under the es Espionage Act. Try to tell that to Chelsea Manning. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, a reality winner. Uh, reality One winner. document, she went to jail for five years. Yeah, so, you know, don't tell me, you know, they don't do it for everybody, you know. So I, I just, it's just amazing, just amazing. This is, this is his M.O. for a long time, as he, he goes against everything that he says on videotape. Yeah. He'll, he'll, yeah. It'll be on video, and he'll say he didn't say it. Well, it's right there in front of people, and they say, "Oh, he never said that." I think that uh, uh, his name Jack Smith is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, I think he thinks he's got a slam dunk case. I really do. I think he he says I can prosecute this case in a couple of weeks. Good, yeah. do it. Yeah, but he says he can do it in a couple of weeks. Well, if he has that kind of confidence in it, he isn't going to have to present much. What was it I heard? Uh, I, I, I've been watching a lot of Chris Christie on the various shows, especially the one he did on uh, CNN the other night. Yeah, that was, that you was know, classic. You know, he was a prosecutor, and, and he talks like one. He makes his case very well. That night, he took down his pants and pissed on everybody. Yes. Yeah. And he said, among other things, you can bet, that the stuff they've got against Trump right now is only one third of what they're going to bring up in court. Yeah, he said because that's the way we did it when I was a, 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 a yeah. attorney general. He said you hold out the best for last. So anybody who's read the indictment said Trump is toast. Yeah, everybody said Trump's I mean, going to jail. Has anybody here re read? read has anybody here read the whole indictment? No. Uh, yeah, no, I've been planning I, on it. I am told it's pretty fast reading, mm -hmm. and that uh, everybody should read it. It's simple. It's understandable. It's not a lot of legal language in there. You know, it's very simple, so that anybody could understand it. And the thing is that all these Me Too, uh, not Me Too people, uh, the uh, um, uh, uh, make them MAGA people, yeah. who say, "Oh, he's being." You know, eighty percent, ninety percent of them people haven't well, seen well, it. Well, if they would just read it and then talk about it, I'd give them credit for that. But they, they won't. Honest, they won't. They, I don't want to read that. That's crap. No, it's not. It's what's indicting this guy. Read it and see what it says. Are you afraid yeah. of what you're going to learn from reading this document? Yep. Yep. You know, I mean, it is just, it's amazing, it's amazing how the, the Republicans are all saying, oh, yes, this is politically motivated, whereas the Democrats are saying, no, it's not, you know. But there's no reason it can't, there's no reason it can be politically motivated because a lot of this, this whole problem was started before he even said he was running for president. You know, his refusal to, to send this stuff to the National Archives. All he had to do was pack it up and send it to the National Archives. But, you know, I do have to give him credit for one thing. It was very nice of him to give people who went to Mar-a-Lago and had to go to the bathroom something to read. <laughs> you, you know. So, I mean, um, uh, wouldn't you have loved to go into that toilet and just be able to pull something from the pile and read it? Oh, Nuclear secrets and all kinds Take of it home with you. How do we know that people didn't take it home? His hey, there was a copier people. around some of them, one of the places where they had the documents. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, why did he have to have the original documents? Why couldn't he have just made copies? And, and at this point, them? who knows how many copies have been made? Yeah. yeah. That That's right. Yes, Brian. And his loyal driver is going to end up going down with him if he's not slow. Well, he and he's not turning on him. You know, and they're they're not supposed to discuss the case. They're going out to dinner right after. You know, they're going to be with each other forever for for the next year or so. So let's get seen. I mean, it's, it's like and, and you so, know that Trump doesn't listen to anybody who tells yeah. him what he has to do. Yeah, and, and, and it, Trump would 
Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't even listen to his lawyers. I mean, his lawyers were telling him, turn this stuff over. What are you holding on to it for? What do you need it for? And the question is what he needed it for. And, and according to Christie, it's just his ego. And Bolton said it was his ego. He said I he just want, he wanted to be able to say to people, look what I've got here. I love how he's leaving town and he stops at a Cuban restaurant, famous Cuban restaurant in Miami. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't poison him. <laughs> when he was president and Cuba had a hurricane or something, he went out and handed out rolls of toilet paper. No, no, that that, that was in oh, Puerto Rico. He hand them oh, out. Puerto Rico. And no, he Cuba, didn't hand them out. He threw them like basketball. Oh, Remember, he kept shooting. That's right. He threw oh, them. It was it was like it was like Oprah, and you get a toilet roll, and you get a toilet roll. Yeah. yeah. It was a campaign. It was a campaign show. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't do him much good. So anyway, you know, I was. And, uh, where, where, where's Melania? Remember before he left presidency, you asked the question, when are they going to yep. see each other next? And I said, they won't see, be seen together at all. And I haven't seen her or her or his family. I think or right, right. Family right. backing him up and always, you know, Junior and all those guys being with him when things are going on. They're scattered. Uh, 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 junior was there. He was at uh, the oh, golf really? course. Yeah, he was oh. at the golf course. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, no, we haven't seen her. That's true. That's absolutely true. We did see her right after he left office, and they went down to Mar-a-Lago, and there would be certain events, and she would show up. But I'm surprised he's not putting the blame on her. She photocopied it all for me. Well, <sighs> you know, I mean, if if uh, if you were the wife of somebody and he was being indicted, wouldn't you go to court with him? You all the payoff money from the from what's her name? You know, that would be motive enough to leave him. Well, I you know, she was saying that she he she was in a ten month relationship with him when she was married when he was married to Melania and then and then uh, malaria and then had was she pregnant at that time too or something? What? When when, she, just oh, 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 she just had the baby. She just had the baby. She just had the baby or was still pregnant with uh, the baby. Yeah. But anyway, something close hmm. to that. Yeah, with the Stormy Daniels thing. Uh, Paralyzed Trump. No more babies. What? Mm -hmm. What'd you say? I said sterilize Trump. No more babies. Yeah, well, you know. I don't think he has the energy to make a baby anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I just, uh, I mean, and, and the thing is that all of this energizes him. I mean, you know, he gives a speech last night. I mean, totally. He, he's using the, uh, what is it, the act, uh, the uh, uh, Presidential Documents Act or something like that. Yeah, he, he calls it the Socks it. Act. The what? Socks, like socks that you wear on your feet. Yeah. He was. He said that in a speech last night that, that they made up this thing because Clinton took uh, audio tapes of everybody and put it in his socks when he left. Yeah, but anyway, I mean, he he said that, that he's going to. He says there's a presidential. <laughs> whatever act about, uh, but it doesn't cover this stuff. It doesn't cover classified, top secret, and so on. It covers, you know. In fact, it says the opposite. It says it's not his stuff. It belongs to the National Archives. It belongs to the American people. Always has, always will. You know? But his base doesn't care. His no. base just wants to hear him rile everybody up, and they're going to keep voting for them no matter what. I don't, I don't see what people think that people who voted for Trump last time are going to say. I've had enough, and with these documents and all these things that are happening, I've had enough of Trump. I'm not going to vote for him anymore. I don't think that's going to happen. Well, I think they're going to keep voting for him. I, he, listen, he's lost. They've they've said he's lost three times. He lost twice when he ran for president because he didn't win the the popular vote in the first election. He didn't win the popular vote or the electoral vote in the second election. And then the midterms came along and they got their hats handed yeah. to them, okay? Yeah. So really, he has not been successful for the party on any level. But and what's I, to think that if he I, runs again, he's gonna win? I still don't think, if he's gonna run, I think he's still gonna be the nominee. Oh, he may be the nominee, but he can't. he's not gonna win. Because also by that time, you know, the economy just took a turn for the better. Mm -hmm. The it, it, you know, uh, 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 the, the Fed's not going to raise rates. The stock market's going back up. Well, not now. 
Oh. They're not going to raise rates now. They're still going to raise oh, rates yeah, yeah. the year, though. So. Yeah, well, but, that's okay. But, Little breaks are nice. You know, inflation is down a great deal. Uh, and yep. uh, so, I mean, by the time that Biden runs, he's going to be able to run on some pretty good stuff. Yep. You oh know. My God. Why is he going to run again? Well. It sucks that he has to run to beat Trump. I mean, that's the only reason why he's going to run again. That's yeah. the only reason why I'll vote for him again. You know, I'd, I've seen him on TV. I saw him the other night with uh, Sean Hannity. And your governor out in California mm. is a good bet. Really? I'll, I'll tell you why he's a good bet. I, I saw him go after Hannity and answer yeah. Hannity's questions. He's sharp. You know, yeah, he, he's he sharp, sharp as a tack. Yeah. And I think if he went against Trump, he wouldn't take any of that bullshit, you know? Gavin, uh, Gavin Newsom. Yeah, yep. Gavin Newsom. He, uh, uh, the trouble with, uh, with Hillary when she was running against Trump, that time when she was walking around, it was that freestanding debate they had where you got to walk around and he was mm -hmm. following her around yeah. if he had just she had just turned around to him and said back off creep she would have <laughs> won the presidency hands down yeah but she didn't show any guts right there and she allowed him to get away with that um newsom would not allow him to get away with anything like that i don't think trump would follow newsom around I don't he think... wouldn't do that to a man. He only did that because Hillary was a woman. He was trying to catch up to her so he could grab her. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. Well. You know what? I don't know if that's in the cards where Hillary's concerned, but you know, I mean, I, you know, and and then they're bringing up, oh well, you know, what about Hillary? What about uh, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden? And I don't care. We're not talking about that. They haven't been indicted yet. No. That's what okay. Phil's gonna tell you tomorrow night. I guarantee you. When he says that, take a drink. Yeah, he'll uh, first uh, first thing. Uh, yeah, he will he say. Will. That's what he's gonna say. He'll, he'll he'll bring up Clinton. I guarantee you, or Biden's son. Everybody tomorrow night, be here with a drink. Yeah. Okay. And as soon as he <laughs> says it, all me when he says that. <laughs> we just yeah. Unless he's listening now and he hears us saying yeah. this, and he probably uh, no. Say. I think even if he listens. He will still. He can't appear. help himself. Well, he exactly. did. He, he did it yeah, last probably. week. He did it last week, and I said you can't even bring that up because Hillary has nothing to do with this. It's all about Trump, and it's all about what he did. Now, yeah. you know, if you want to go back and try and do the whole Hillary thing again, go ahead. If you want to go after Tr Biden because of what uh, Hunter might have done or not done, uh, or what Biden might have done or not done, then go after him. But we already have a case against Trump, yeah. you know, and that just, it, it, somebody best explained it, I think, here, and I can't remember who it was, uh, it might have been Josh, as a matter of fact, who said it's kind of like, you, or maybe you even said it, uh, Brian, it, it, it's like you're driving down the road and the cop stops you for speeding, and then you say, well, the guy in front of me was going faster, and then yeah. you say, too bad, we caught you. Yeah. yeah, that was, it was Josh. It was Josh. Yeah, I listened to I listened to the show yeah. today on the way to Lodi. And yeah. It was Josh. Yeah, yeah. That and was, and that's, that's a perfect ex, it's a perfect example yeah. why it doesn't matter whether Hillary did anything. Yeah, uh, what's in front of you now? Ex yeah. Exactly. Uh, hey, you got caught. All this could have been avoided. This is this is yeah. the point yeah. that the only person to blame for what went on yesterday uh, in this indictment. Is, Donald, uh, is Trump. Donald Trump. If he had just given over those papers in the very beginning when they were asked for in a very polite fashion, in a very uh, decent fashion by the uh, National Archives, then well, this would be happening now. But yeah. that's not him, so it's catching up to him now. That's right. All this stuff that we've complained, that uh, people yep. complain about for all these years, finally mm. there's some stuff that's catching up to him. Well, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, uh, it, it, how can I put it? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is stuff he's he's been guilty of all these years. I mean, he's done a lot of stuff in his career, and uh, even before he was president, he screwed uh, over a lot of people in his career yeah. before he was president. Well, they they, they really could be a, a real problem, uh, and he's just catching up with him now. That's all. No, no, no good lawyer will work for him now. He's ending up with these fifty dollar an hour lawyers now. He's got a few few good ones, but what were you going to say, Charlie? 
Well, basically what Alan just said. No, I don't know a lawyer why, work for him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand why his why the driver doesn't have a lawyer. Does you he, know? he doesn't have a lawyer? Yes, he has a lawyer. Because uh, I thought he didn't he didn't say you know guilty or not guilty. He said right, because he didn't, have a, lawyer he didn't have a lawyer yet. Right. Oh, he didn't okay. have one. They'll probably give him a public defender because Trump's not going to pay for it. Well, you, yeah, it, that's, what, it, that's it, what I thought. I'm like, if this is his loyal buddy for how many every years, he's in this together with him. He's sort of relying on this guy. You think that there would be something sort of like he would help take care of it, but that's not Trump. Oh, you know? Okay, but let's take it one step further. Trump is stupid because <laughs> if he doesn't take care of this guy, at some point, this guy's going to say, Yep. Oh, well, if he's not going to take care of me, I'm not going to take care of him. Hey, mm -hmm. I want to make a deal. I'll tell you everything I know if you just drop the charges against me. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, the of, move him in the bathroom. Move him in the stage. <laughs> it happens all the time in federal court. We'll, yeah. you, we'll, we'll drop charges on you if you tell us the truth. Yeah. Probably Sammy the Bull Gravano against John Gotti is a perfect yep. example. And by the way, you know, if, if, if seeing what they've got on him, if I were Trump, I would try and make a deal. All right? But he's not about to. No. He has no desire to do anything like that, you know? Yeah. And and, and uh, he, were, he refuses to say he's wrong on any level. And he got he this. He's claiming he's innocent. Well, he's admitting the crime. Well, he got this from Roy Cohn, you know, who for years was his, he was Cohn's protege. And Cohn's attitude was, you never admit your guilt, you never give in, you know? And that's exactly what, what, he, what Trump has been doing, you know, what he's been doing all his life. Yeah. You know, so. Was he this bad when, I mean, we're, you know, California, I don't, so, you know, you didn't really hear about Trump that much <laughs> on TV. But was he that bad with business deals and everything before all this time? Look how many times he declared bankruptcy. It it it's take it took a while for people to get completely wise to him. Mm -hmm. uh, but then all of a sudden, here he's got one failure after another. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, can I ask you a question, an honest question? How the Fuck! Do you lose money running a casino? Yeah, no, no kidding. <laughs> Remember the movie Casino? The guy, yeah. the guy's, the, the guy's nephew was uh, was putting the wrong machines in the front of the aisleway, so yeah. machines. Yeah. So he's the guy's either stupid or he's in on it. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, in Casino, these guys were stealing from the casino and taking the money back to like Omaha or someplace like that. Oh, and nice. and even with story. all of that, they still made money. You know, yeah. so I mean, based how on a you? True story. Yeah, I know it's based on true story. It, it, the, the skim was a real thing. Mm -hmm. Oh uh, no, uh, they were all skimming. All those places were skimming in those days because they were all mob controlled. They're not anymore. Yeah. You, you know how they got rid of the mob in in Vegas? One guy got a whole rid of the mob in Vegas. Howard Hughes. Mm -hmm. oh. What he did is to get the mob out of Vegas, he went to every hotel and bought it. Huh. He owned every hotel in Vegas, and the mob just had to leave, you know? Uh, and that's why the mob doesn't exist there any longer. I like that idea. Maybe I should do that with my money, go buy the Bellagio. <laughs> then I could have my own room, I could leave my clothes. Yeah, like you could afford the Bellagio. I don't care how much fuck you money you've got. The Bellagio is not on your uh, radar. No, not to buy, but I've stayed there. In fact, you couldn't buy a fountain at the Bellagio. No, I, don't, I, I think you're right there, but I've stayed there before. It's beautiful. Yeah, oh, it's, you know, as as those kind of hotels go. I mean, they're all kind well, of... Well, they're five-star five hotels. Yeah, well, they're, they're decent, but, you know, they're... I don't know. I, did I ever stay at the Bellagio? No, no. No, you announced you were Alex Bennett in the motel. No, I, no, we yeah. stayed at the Penn and Teller Hotel with the one that they, no, the that, Rio, that was, the Rio. Rio, yeah. Yeah, we were that was off the strip though, a mile. No, but just a mile, just a mile. It, it's a nice. I've, I've, mm -hmm. I've never stayed in the Rio, mm -hmm. but I've been in the Rio. Well, the reason I stayed nice. at the Rio was because we were. I was working with. Uh, Play Incorporated, and we were doing the CES show. 
And so I was there for five days, you know, once a year. And uh, I got to tell you, you don't want to spend five days in Vegas. By the, by the fourth day, your brains are getting fried. Or you're broke. No, you just, I didn't. You, you mortgage the house away just so you can gamble. Longer. No, you, you learn if you're going to go work there, you don't gamble. You know, I mean, I know people who live in Vegas and they don't gamble. They never gamble, you know, so. Um, I mean, um, Jimmy Kimmel was raised in uh, in Vegas. Imagine being raised in Vegas. How disgusting must that be? You know, be? If, you get, if you get away from the Strip, it's very, ugh. It's kind of a shithole town. Well, you know, it's not. It's actually, there are parts of it are very nice. It's a residential town where, but most mm-hmm. of the people that own the homes that live in Vegas are the people who work in Vegas. So they're working at the hotels, whether they're working in the restaurants or, you know, waitresses or blackjack dealers or whatever. And, uh, but, uh, it, you know, it's not a, not a horrible town. It's just not really terrific. Screw Retire- them. They're stealing my baseball team. Screw them. Oh, yeah. You know, you're nice. right. I never thought about that. They stole the, the Oakland A's, right? Yep. The Las Vegas A's? Are they called the Las Vegas A's? Stop. I don't even want to hear it. They will. <laughs> <laughs> but are they called the Las Vegas A's? They Whatever. Were, uh, are they still called the Oakland A's? <laughs> they haven't Today, moved yet. Today, yes. They, they took another step yesterday. They got approved for their tax money. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Now they got, the only thing is the governor has to sign it now. Why did Mayor well, governor? Mayor well, governor. Well, I remember when uh, when you had the like uh, what do you call it the uh, uh, the football team. Uh, the, there were no there were no Raiders. sports teams what ten years ago in in Vegas because yeah. they didn't want to have any betting. Now they've got everything but basketball basically. Yeah, they, they have hockey that has only been around like six or seven years and won six two years. Where do they have the ice? Where, then, where do they put the, the ice without it melting? Six years and they, Indoors. they they took they took the Stanley Cup last night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're right. Yes. Yeah. It takes thirty years to take a Stanley Cup, and they did it in six. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kevin, I'll, I'll buy you your first Giants shirt. Okay, is that okay? I was a Giants fan when I was a kid, and I jumped over to the A's because the Giants <laughs> did the same fucking thing and let the Giants go into the toilet. And then oh. the A's turned around and did it. It's just disgusting. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a good time. Uh. The owners are just pieces of shit. We'll, we'll pitch in and buy you a uh, Las Vegas A's baseball game. No, you won't, because I'll, mm-hmm. I'll put my, <laughs> come on here and I'll burn it. <laughs> well, You'll just be wasting your money. Actually, the Oakland A's were my favorite team. Because They're they were fit. Because, I, because I, knew, I knew Wally Haas, who owned the team. You know, yeah. and anytime I wanted to go out to see an A's game, he'd comp me seats. You know, I uh, like the Giants. I love the A's. And and I had uh, all the A's gear, the hats, the shirts, the everything. And uh, I I also threw out the uh, first pitch at a game. Oh yeah. no 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 really? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God! Is there a video huh. of that? That would be classic. Well, I wish yeah. there were because what happened was you know I'm not exactly what you, what you would call a great pitcher. No, really? <laughs> and they said, you're going to throw out the first pitch. What you do is you go to the mound, you just take the pitch, the ball, and just throw it over for, over over home base. And I go, oh, that's going to be simple. And then I get out there, and, you know, oh, when, you're, when you're sitting there looking at the field, yeah. it's a very short distance between the pitcher's mound and, mm-hmm. and home, right, and the home base. When you're standing there, it may as well be in the next county, 60 feet, 6 inches. I mean, <laughs> and, and this from a guy who basically in his whole life had never thrown a baseball. So I do everything. I grab the ball, and I just slam it out there. And by the way, amazing, I make it to the home base, oh. and I hit the umpire in the crotch. <laughs> right on. That would have been a good video. <laughs> It's out there somewhere. That's yeah. why we need the video. <laughs> yeah. That's why we need the video, exactly. 
But I, I imagine, so, imagine yeah, I'll bet he stopped watching, uh, watching, listening to your show. I wonder if I guess they broadcast all the games, and I guess they would broadcast somebody throwing out the first pitch, right? Oh yeah, it, it's it's out there somewhere. I remember when you did that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, there's a little midget who walked into the room ah. there. I think we can. Uh, she, what, what's she saying to you? What? She says she's hungry. She's hungry. <laughs> yeah. So I don't go by. I'm hungry. It's like I want to eat something. Hey, uh, go, 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 go eat. No, no talking. You Bye. know, you know where the refrigerator is. Yeah, that's what my mom would say. Yeah. yeah. Cook something. Or go fix something to eat. <laughs> now she's just now she's posing. Go ask mommy. You just tell her I'm Brian. Ask mommy. Oh, That's boy. right. Daddy's busy. Go I'm telling mommy. you, I buy the biggest baseball bat you can buy because in the next couple of years, <laughs> he's uh, not going to need it. Bill and I'll take him out and teach him how to shoot. Yeah, we're going to go shoot. Yeah. Anyways. I just got lightheaded here. I guess staring at the screen. You know what it is? I think my I have to wear glasses now all the time. Yeah. And then my my, hmm? my other glasses that I had broke, and then uh, I I haven't been have I haven't had glasses to look at my computer for like a month or two. Yeah. And it, got, it really got to me. So uh, you I just need it for computers, back. right? Yeah, just for my yeah, just for computers. Yeah, just for here. Yeah. For yeah. Here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what most of us do, Brian, that wear glasses on a regular basis? We buy a spare pair at the same time. Yeah, I know. You guys keep saying go to go to Costco and get like the ten pack or something. Yeah, well yeah. here here. Yeah. Amazon twelve for four bucks. Oh my god. Amazon, okay. Yeah. Twelve for four mine. bucks? Yeah, it's like I got about twelve of these. I just throw them all over the house and they show I up. I got six. I got I one in every room here in the car. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I don't even know where they are. <laughs> they just show up. And when you start losing all of them, you just buy some more. Yeah, not that much. Wow. Okay. Well, let's see here. And when you go to sell your truck, somebody writes you a letter that says, I got your truck. I found 17 pairs of reading glasses <laughs> yeah. out the seat. Well, I, yeah, I have them all over the place here. Free. But yep. somehow what happens is, though, you, you, you buy like five pair, let's say. And you put one in the bedroom, you put two here by the computer, you put one in the kitchen and whatever, and eventually they all wind up in the same place. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, oh, look what I got at the suggestion of you guys. Two. I, I got a cozy, okay, yeah. I got a cozy. Did, yeah. did you also get something that you said you weren't getting from me on Monday? Did what? you get a get well teddy bear? No, I didn't. I have a picture. They they dropped it at your mailboxes, really? Wow. Oh, they let, dropped it at the mailbox? I haven't been down there in three years. Oh. <laughs> but anyway. I will I'll contact them and say what's going on. I put the I delivered. put this in here an hour before the show. And usually oh. by now it would be completely warm. Let's see how it is. Oh, it's still kind of got a little bit of a cool cold. Yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah, son of a bitch. Huh. Well, Somebody in your building is very grateful for this gift. Yeah, really? <laughs> Come on. Man. How did you send it? By Amazon? Yeah, Amazon Prime. Well, then it should be at my front door, but it isn't. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look online and see the pit, if I still have the picture, and then I'll... How, how long picture. ago did you did they send you the picture? Um... Uh, uh, it was delivered on, I think, Friday. Wow. Really? I didn't get it. Yeah, okay. Everything's quick. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so. I'll find it. Anyway, so, you know, I mean, I just, I'm amazed at, uh, I, I just, I, I don't understand the Republicans and why they're, why they feel the necessity to stand up for Trump. I mean, are they that fearful of him? They need those voters. When Trump goes to jail, they need those voters to vote for them. They don't want to piss the voters off. Well, you know, piss them off. What the hell? Where are they going to go? Right? You back know, underground. Back under those rocks. Back under the rocks. But if, if what, they're not going to go out and vote for the Republican? 
Well, <laughs> and I guess they don't vote for the Republican. Make yourself palatable to us Democrats. You know, I mean, if I were a Republican, which I obviously am not, but if I were a Republican, first thing I would do is is get behind uh, Chris Christie right now. Chris Christie, he's the guy, and I'm not saying because he he is uh, he he's a just the most uh, conservative of conservatives. He's very much a right winger, no question about him. But he's principled, and I think that's important. And when I heard him in this interview the other night um, on CNN, where they brought up Bridgegate, this thing that happened here where he I don't know, did something to slow down the bridge traffic, yeah. and, but he didn't do it. One of his people did it. Yeah. And he, they said, how would you have changed what went on there? He said, well, I'd know who to hire and not who not to hire. He said, but I hired the wrong people. He said, but in the end, I'm responsible because I was the governor and I was the guy running. And even if somebody did it in my name, I'm responsible. So I have to take the blame for it. And I thought that was the best possible answer I could hear out of somebody. The thing that I liked about his interview or his his answers is they were straightforward. There was no hesitation in his answers. And anything anybody asked him he was spot on he just he just came right out and said what was supposed to be said well the other thing I can tell he actually answered the questions he answered the question yeah 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 Uh, but the other thing that he did was when uh, I think I can't remember who the interviewer was said to him uh, Trump has referred to you as uh, uh, made fun of your weight and he said, look, I've had a weight problem for years now. He said, it's something I've had to deal with and fight and do whatever with. But, but, he said, Trump doing that is because he's a baby. He's a child. A child. And he doesn't know how to act any other way. He said, and if he were your child and he did that to somebody, you'd send him to his room without dinner. <laughs> you know, uh, you chastise. Mouth washed out with soap. Exactly. He's and he didn't he didn't say anything else about that. But that you know, come on, it's just him. He has, you know, he's a big baby. He said, the, he, "Huh? Oh, go ahead, go ahead." Uh, but do you want a child for your president? You know, and the answer is, of course, no. You know, the only thing I get worried, not yeah. worried about, but the, sorry, I didn't yeah. mean to interrupt. Uh, d- delivered Sorry. June twelfth. Will connect. Uh, uh, contact Amazon. Does that look like your mailboxes? Do you remember laying on the floor? Isn't that great? Let me see here. It dep- depends. Usually they, they should bring it to the door on the eighth I'll floor. I'll contact them, but they, but they don't. I, oh, there, yeah, there nice we go. Oh, there. yeah, that's that's our. Uh, that's downstairs. I seem to remember seeing that package. <laughs> <laughs> You sure okay. we didn't bring it up and put it somewhere? No, they, they always leave. Sometimes they leave them downstairs, which they shouldn't do because that's where somebody can steal them. Of course. Mm-hmm. They put them in front of my door. There are only three people on this floor, and I know every one of them. And uh, they wouldn't steal it, but, you know. I, I'll, I'll, I'll contact Amazon after the show. I, I, yeah, well, uh, I Sorry. probably should go down after the show and look, you know. But, okay. But I don't know if I can get down there tonight, so. Okay. But Maybe wait a minute, but wait a minute. Wait, did, have I been out there since Friday? I think we went out on Friday. I, we should have seen it. Maybe it. Maybe it's up here. Marjorie just put it on the floor, and I didn't notice it. You know. It says it was delivered at two fourteen p.m. I'm not sure if that's oh, your that's time or mine. Yeah, that hmm. would be two fourteen in the afternoon. Yeah. If we went out for a walk, we would come back around three, so we would have seen it. You know. So I don't know. Uh, you can let me know. You know, all these companies are starting to get to me. Uh-huh. You know, none of them are very good anymore. They, you remember? You remember how good Amazon used to be? Let me tell you, give you a little story here that went on here. Marjorie, uh, I I have been getting these throat lozenges, these uh, sugar-free throat lozenges forever, because I they they're good when I got a little sore throat or. Even when I'm sleeping at night, if I don't want my mouth to get too uh, uh, dry, 
having one of these lozenges under my under my tongue for the night is pretty good. It usually lasts the whole night, believe it or not. So she went out and she ordered 10 packages of the sugar-free, okay? Blackberry. Yeah. When they got here, it wasn't sugar-free. It was the regular kind. Uh-huh. So she got a hold of, of Amazon and said, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they said, well, it's third party. I said, yeah, but you got to be responsible for it. And they said, yeah, I guess so. So we'll give you back your money. Well, finally, this happened three times. And they didn't, they always said, just keep it. Don't send it back, right? Mm-hmm. The third time she gets a hold of them, they say, okay, we'll, you know, send the money back to your account. And they never did. Mm-hmm. And she had to deal with them for the better part of two months. I would come in in the morning when I woke up and hear her yelling and screaming here in the office to Amazon, just trying to get them to reverse this thing or to send them the right package. I mean, how often can the wrong package be sent, even by a third party? And that's the kind of company they become. It used to be that happened, they immediately said, okay, money's taken off, Uh, we'll send you out new ones tomorrow. Okay, you don't even have to order them. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case anymore, you know? And they're just, they're just terrible. And I understand one of the reasons they make it a little more difficult now is because they, they get, the way they've been doing business all these years, I'm surprised they're still in business because they were very good about that, you know. So anyway, so that's, you know, none of these companies are operating like they used to. They're nope. not, not the same integrity. And it used to be Amazon, man. I would order from Amazon because I knew that if I had a problem with Amazon, I'd just say, "Hey, it didn't get. I didn't get here. Okay, we'll say we'll credit your account, or we'll send you another one." And, yep. it, and it, yeah, and if it gets, it comes to you, keep it on us. That was usually the way they did it. Not anymore. No, 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 no. Oh, look who's wearing an Oakland A shirt. Oh, he had it on earlier too. Really? Uh, There's still the Oakland A's, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. At least for another year, probably. Oh, okay. All right. So they were the team you rooted for, right? I had season tickets in the seventies. You know, you know. That's the other thing you gotta hate. Is all is these teams abandoning you? Yeah. You know in what? What 70s. happened over? What happened to the football team in Oakland? Where did they wind up going? Are the uh, Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Las Vegas. The Raiders well, went to Vegas. They went from Vegas to L.A., from L.A. back to to Oakland, and then Oakland, what, back to L.A. again, I think. And I don't care about them. Yeah. yeah but, but nevertheless, let's say you're a, a Raiders fan. I mean, yeah. come on. They're abandoning you. Yeah. Still, they still root for him here. They still have him on the newscast. Here's the 49 er score, and here's the Raiders score. He's going to have yeah. season tickets like in Las your Vegas. Girlfriend, it's like taking your girlfriend back after she keeps breaking up with you and going yeah. to fuck Well, you've got to admit, the 49ers have stayed here in San Francisco forever. Yeah. All yeah. right? And, they, and they're playing on that, too. Now, uh, let's see here. How many people, th- three of the people on, on this panel, three of the six of us, all live in the Bay Area. The stories coming out of San Francisco get worse and worse and worse. Yeah, so now the, the main mall at uh, downtown right across, not, not Union Square, but down the street. Now was, that, was that mall, was that mall kind of, did that used to be the Emporium? Yeah, I believe so. Macy's yeah. is there and yeah. it's huge. Yeah. It's like seven different, seven stories. The, the, the movie theaters are, are closing tomorrow. And then there's they just they just showed like a map of the whole area of all the, the stores Union Square, that are there. Union Square. This, this is the Westfield Mall on Westfield. Market Street. Well, Westfield. Well, Westfield is a big company that has all these malls. They also have a mo- mall yeah. down in uh, San Jose or something, and it's doing yeah, fine. Yeah, Valley Fair is a Westfield mall. Well, so what's yeah, it, so what's it, what's the problem? Leaving. People stealing stuff, right? And there's and there's a stupid supervisor. That, no, no. See, this supervisor of San Francisco, man, I got the picture of the idiot. He's smiling while he's talking on the news today, and he just says, oh, it's because it's, times are changing. 
the you know how you buy products are changing there's this change going on so we have to change with it and I'm like all these retail stores are going out what is there to go to San Francisco for anymore yeah. the whole area is going to be homeless the whole area nobody wants to go in we would park it at, at Union Square go to some of the stores there and we would right. walk down the mall there and, and go through the mall the mall is really beautiful inside and then you'd come out and you go back and in, in there between those two points there's homeless everywhere people sleeping during the day and pee smell everywhere even yeah, in, the tenderloin is going to get real big yeah so so what do you have you have golden gate bridge you have tourists going to you know like like a uh, fisherman's wharf that's the only thing that's going to be there now but even that's fading yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's so bad. Even the hookers that last Saturday, I had to say, please. They, 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 they say that the only thing that can change that is if they, if they make uh, more of those areas residential, if they they mix some residential areas inside there. Because when you start looking at areas like, oh right, Larkin, ah. and when you look at uh, when you look at areas like. Uh, the new uh, baseball, where that was China Basin, and that was all run down. That's all regenerated. And then where the Warriors play now, oh, there's a big hospital there now. That whole area has been redone. That's the only thing that will save that that area going over the hill into the downtown area. Now, and Larkin, he, he, here's John Larkin. Tenderloin, where, where it's not too tender. The tenderloin. <laughs> where it's not too oh, tender really at, at Chappelle's how, how, Day. How bad is it, John? Horrible. And everything's closing. It's yeah. just... Uh, like last night, I, I, uh, I went to a show over at the Golden Gate Theater, which is right in the Tenderloin, and uh, we, we got out at about 11, and we go, let's go get a, get a drink or get something to eat. Nothing. Nothing anywhere. It's a ghost town. Hmm. Really? That, yeah. that, that Martin's bad. store is a shoe store. It's the only one on the block because, that's open. Because right? I can remember talking to you couple of years ago about living in the Tenderloin and I remember when I was a kid the Tenderloin was a terrible area you didn't go into it you know and I said how is it and you were talking about how it was getting very nice and that it was picking up and so on and so forth and all of a sudden now I'm hearing that that's ground zero for this devastation of, of San Francisco and Market Street yeah this is the guy Dorsey Matt Dorsey and he's smiling during the interview. The San Francisco supervisor, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And he's smiling during this interview saying, well, it's just a change of how people buy stuff and how people shop now. So we have to go with the changes. And I'm like, you, everybody's it's leaving. This. I, I, what are you doing? The, oh, my God. So well, is, they, yeah. the, the mayors were getting really desperate. And they're um, she's arresting drug addicts now. I mean, just just flat out you know if you're doing drugs on the street you're getting arrested so it has kind of cleaned up but it's about it, it, time it's still the businesses are well, going well, no but there's there's nobody around here anymore the, people they, don't come out they say the what problem is, with the drug problem is is that san francisco has also become ground zero for the cheapest fentanyl in the country and yeah. so a lot of drug people are moving to san francisco to buy the cheaper fentanyl and they're the most lenient on the crime, so that's why they keep coming. They're coming from all over. Yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. John, it's good to see you. Last time you were on, Alex got demonetized. <laughs> you heard about that, John? No, what a, happened? A, a while back, and I'm going to have to state this in a way that doesn't uh, get their algorithms in an uproar. Uh, you and I were talking about you were talking about Fox, and how they were saying bad information about COVID, right? Uh -huh. And so you yeah. then quoted what Fox was saying. Two years later, that, that's how much they're on top of this. YouTube, really? YouTube, their algorithms pick this up and go, we are charging you with a warning rather than a strike against you, but a warning <laughs> because that's you good. said that, blah, 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 blah. And I went to it. And I wrote them and I said, hey, no, this was, the person was just quoting what Fox had said, okay? And then afterwards, we were saying things like, isn't that horrible? How can they do this? They're killing people by doing this and so on and so forth. And uh, I said, I want to protest it. They went back and they said, we put a human being to listen to it and it still holds. Well, all they did is they, the algorithm just snipped out that segment yeah. what you said that was bad and 
they they won't let go of it. They just won't. Do, you, do, you, do you remember what I was talking about? Yeah, I remember or? what you were talking about. You were referring to something Fox was said said in but reference he, he, that was he, erroneous he, in uh, in re regards to COVID nineteen. But you were oh, okay. you quoted them directly. You quoted them and what they were saying, and that was snipped out by their algorithm as something we were saying that uh, you know it, it's just it's a horror i hate youtube too you know <laughs> I, yeah 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 that's crazy but, yes yes jeff well, most of the places in connecticut are smaller than they used to be they they go out of business well i mean you know, look i can see why a lot of stores have gone out of business because during covid we got used to using amazon oh, and really? instacart and things like that so I understand price, that completely. I mean, here in New York, uh, downtown or midtown, the office buildings are empty, are really getting empty because, you know, people just didn't want to come back to work and they want to work from home. That's right. uh, and it, it's getting very bad for the people who own all that property. They're talking about taking office buildings in New York now and turning them, in, them into condominiums. Yeah, yeah. You know. Can you imagine how much that would cost to turn a uh, office building into a, you know, a, a, like an apartment? Well, you have to redo all the plumbing and everything. Well, yeah, but uh, they would rather do that than you know have an empty building all the time. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and eventually they'll make the money back. Plus, if it's a condominium, they're then selling you know the yeah. units, and they yeah, I think they'd go pretty well. You know, uh, of course. You know, you do have people who are, are slumming in that area, like Trump lives down there. Uh, and, uh, you know, but it, it's just, it, it, it's amazing what's happening. It's happening all over the country, but in San Francisco, it's supposedly just horrid. And I'm sure, you know, yeah. uh, and I'm glad you, you know, called uh, tonight. You know, well, I, I, yeah, I heard you guys talking about uh, San Francisco, and I go, I got to get in. And then I tried to do my Zoom, but it's been so long since I used it. They were, uh, I had to do some kind of rigmarole to update it. And, yeah, yeah. You know. But it is it is amazing what's happened to your, especially to your neighborhood. Because you Yeah, used, it's, you, um, there, you, you go out at night and you like, you just see all these, um, you know, what do they call those guys that deliver the food? The, uh, you know, the guys, Inst the guys work. Instacart. Yeah, Instacart or whatever, yeah. the Grubhub. Yeah. And Grubhub, they're just yeah. everywhere. They're, like, you'll go by McDonald's and there'll be like 30 of them just waiting for orders outside of McDonald's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, what the fuck, man? The food's just, nasty people, are just, McDonald's people aren't going outside anymore. They don't want to go outside. They just want to stay at home and have shitty food delivered to them. Well, we, oh, Instacart. <laughs> I like my fun. We works for me. I've seen Instacart <laughs> grow from a little company to a gigantic, gigantic company. No, uh, but uh, you know, I mean, in the right place at the right time. Yeah, and we can order from far flung places like Stu Leonard's up in up in Westchester and get it wow. delivered by uh, by uh, Instacart. So, you know, but then uh, it's old though. By the time it gets to you, isn't it? No. Well, I mean, it's no. We don't. We don't get stuff that's warm. Oh. Uh, you okay. know. Uh, you who don't would he, get McDonald's. Who would get McDonald's delivered? Well, I wouldn't them? get McDonald's delivered. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to get hamburgers get delivered because by the time they get to you, they're yeah. you know they're uh, already gone from rare to well done just by sitting there. Hey, so, listen, so I got I got the theme rolling. I know I oh, I have wow. to tell everybody oh. that because you can't hear it. And why oh, is I that about that time already? Yeah. yeah. Time where, call more often, John. We'd love. Yeah, it. I got to get in earlier. I got to do it earlier. Especially because you're you're really at ground zero in in what's happening in San Francisco. You yeah. know, you're how many blocks away from Union Square? That's that's where they what they're all talking about. I'm at, I'm at Turk and Leavenworth, right in the heart. <laughs> when I was a kid, man, my mother used to shop at the City of Paris, and they used to go to I Magnon, and all of that was the place for all the big stores the emporium and you know oh yeah, well what the hell you know hey listen right. thanks jeff really appreciate it you know always good to have you here alan good to have your input tonight charlie hey, got you to laugh at one of my jokes yeah how how is everything in That's texas it. charlie okay 
Uh, so far, yeah. hot. I right, hot. Yeah, it's like 106 yeah. or something like that. I saw. Oh, Brian, no. thank you so much, Brian. Also, thank Adrian for making a guest appearance. Yes. Also, <laughs> thanks to Kevin for being here. Looks like he got some real sun this weekend at the graduation. And of course, uh, 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 John Larkin. I want to thank See you, you guys. Very Good much seeing you all. As well. yeah, Please call back. again soon, will you, John? And everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Jack Bishop is next with the intersection. He'll be here at uh, uh, using Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, night, everybody. Yeah.